Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. This is Tanner Style. I'm Oliver Tanner, and today we are going to make my version of a Basque style pizza. Let's get cooking. So today's episode is a very special episode and we're going to get to what makes it so special at the end of the video. But right now let's get cooking with our Basque uh, pizza. Now there is, from what I've seen, from what I've researched, there's no such thing as a Basque pizza. So I'm kind of making this up. This is my version of a Basque style pizza. So let's take a look at what we're going to be using today. So for our dough, we have pre-made Basque sheep herder bread, normally cooked in a Dutch oven. We've got some Basque sauce, uh, courtesy of the Basque Kitchen by Gerald Herigoyen, uh, who is an amazing chef who I know personally. I'm gonna put a link to where you can buy his book down in the description. We've got some red onions. Uh, we've got green peppers and red peppers that have both been fire roasted and then julienne. Onions, green and red peppers, uh, you see a lot of that in Basque cooking as well as garlic. So we've got that. We've got some chistorra. Well, we'll t give you a look what it looked like uh, right now. So for some of our Basque ingredients on our pizza, we've got a few special things. One, we've got some petite Basque um, cheese. Comes straight from the Basque country. And we're going to grate this up. As well, we have some chistorra, right? And chistorra is a popular... Uh, sausage that is made throughout the Basque country. Uh, it's kind of a hung and dry cured uh, sausage. And then we also have, and, and I really love this stuff. This is delicious. Um, we have some Falls brand Basque chorizo. This is not made in the Basque country. This is from Idaho. It can be a little bit hard to find, especially if you don't live anywhere near Idaho. Uh, if you live near Idaho, you can probably get this at a local store. Uh, so that's what it looked like uh, before we cut it up. And this is what it looks like. We've uh, sliced this at a bias. We have our Basque chorizo. This stuff is delicious. And then we have our Basque cheese, the Petit Basque and we've shredded that whole wheel. And then we just got a little bit of cornmeal to sprinkle on the bottom. So we're gonna be cooking our pizza today in our special new setup. We bought a 20 quart, 18 inch wide Dutch oven. And we're gonna be cooking the pizza inside of there, but we're not gonna be putting the pizza directly into the pan. We're gonna be putting the pizza into a pan. It's a cake pan or deep dish pizza pan. We're gonna be putting that inside of our Dutch oven to simulate a real oven. All right, so let's get rolling out our dough real quick. All right, so here we are. We've got our dough, got some flour on our table. It's kind of difficult out here. Uh, it's a little bit windy today, not uh, excessively windy, but just enough uh, to become a nuisance, really. All right, so we're gonna start with our pizza dough. We're just gonna kind of push it out. You can kind of see I'm leaving it kind of thick around the edges and then leaving it thicker in the middle, right? And we're going to kind of stretch it out. It's a little bit cold out here, so my dough is being kind of stiff. Um, it would work a little bit better if it were warmer out here. And we don't want to tear our dough. We just want to stretch it out. So uh, let's see. Let's give it a little roll. So I think we've got our dough about where we want it. So let's take our pan, throw in just a little bit of cornmeal on the bottom to help prevent any kind of sticking. Maybe a little bit more. Let's go ahead, get our dough in there. Now I, I did roll it out so the dough is a little bit bigger than the pan. Um, I expect this to shrink just a little bit while we're cooking. And also I'm, I I kind of want the dough to go up the sides of the pan just a little bit, kind of create that deep dish kind of an effect here. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's get our sauce in there. All right, so the cool thing about Basque sauce, this is not 
really a predominantly tomato-based sauce. Most uh, pizza sauces you're gonna find, oh, mostly tomato sauce, and then maybe a few spices added to that and whatnot. Basque sauce is really unique because there there are a few tomatoes in there, but for the most part, it's all peppers. And then we have some espelette pepper in there, things like that to give it that Basque flavor. And, you know, uh, like I said, uh, kind of when we were looking at our ingredients, you're gonna see a lot of peppers in Basque cuisine. So this sauce is kind of special and we're gonna see how it works out as a pizza sauce. I think it's gonna work out just fine. I've made a um, barbecue sauce from Basque sauce before, and that turned out to be absolutely delicious. <laughs> So I think that looks like it's probably enough. So as we add our ingredients, uh, there's gonna be some intention as to why we add what we do when we do, okay? There's kind of a theory that we have behind this, right? We um, want for everything to be well cooked. We want some caramelization on some things. We want less caramelization on other things. A lot of times pizzas are just kind of thrown together and it kind of seems like there's not really a lot of thought to how they're thrown together. So we're gonna start out with our garlic on the bottom. We want our garlic to cook, but we don't want it to burn. Burned garlic takes on kind of a gross, bitter flavor, but cooked garlic uh, can be quite delicious. Uh, now we are adding a lot of garlic and Basques love garlic. Um, and uh, well, I mean, I love garlic. So we'll throw that on there. And this way it's gonna be underneath all the cheese and other ingredients and it's not really gonna get burned or scorched. Same with onions. A lot of times onions, I don't know if you've ever noticed when you have onions on pizza, sometimes there's onions on top and they just kind of get blackened and stringy and they kind of lose, you know, their good oniony flavor. So we took and we julienned our onions up. We're gonna add those on here on the bottom. We're gonna do about the same with our red and green peppers. We're gonna put those down here with all the rest of our vegetables. Now, I'm not really so worried about the scorching with the red and green peppers, uh, largely because we've uh, already removed the skin. We've roasted them, peeled them. Uh, these are, I mean, these have already got some of the sugars and flavors coming out of them. So this is gonna add quite a lot of flavor to our pizza. And you know, after we roasted them and uh, peeled them, we just julienned them. All right, so at this point, we've got on pretty much all of our vegetables. So now is when we're gonna add all of our cheese. And this cheese, it is a sheep's milk cheese. It was kind of, it was really hard on the outside, kind of had a hard rind on the outside of it. But then when I got uh, on the inside, uh, it was surprisingly soft. I did just a little test melt last night, uh, just threw a little bit of cheese onto a hot pan and it melted up. I think that this should work well for our pizza. I have never actually made pizza with this cheese before. And this is kind of an experimental thing. I like lots of cheese. I think most people probably do. Um, cheese is delicious. And this cheese is not cheap either. Uh, so we paid a pretty good amount. Uh, but, you know, like I said, we're going to talk about it at the end. This is a special episode. We went all out for this. A lot of these ingredients. But for the sake of what today's... Uh, recipe or video is, um, th it's very much worth it. So now we've got our Basque chorizo uh, coming on and you know we're basically gonna treat this like it's pepperoni. Definitely does not taste like pepperoni. <laughs> Think of how much pepperoni you want on your pizza and that's pretty much how we're treating this. Just cover the whole thing with it because it's pretty hard to get to a point where there's too much. And when you're talking pizza and meats for pizza, what's uh, the only thing more classic than pepperoni is sausage. And so we're gonna treat our chistora like the sausage that you might find on 
uh, classical pizza. And this cheese is uh, pretty oily. Um, there's a lot of fat in there. Uh, anytime you get a dry cured meat, um, if there's a lot of fat in it, it's gonna just be concentrated uh, once it's dried and all the water is out of it, right? And uh, we'll see how this turns out. I'm really not sure, but I think it's gonna turn out good. I know it tastes good on its own. And this is a product that is kind of hard to find in the United States. You're not gonna find it at your local store. We had to order this on Amazon. We're gonna finish it off with just a little bit more of our cheese, just because we're Americans and we always add more cheese to everything. It's the American way, right? I am Basque, but I, I'm, you know, I'm a quarter Basque. I love that quarter of Basqueness, but I am also 100% American and I spread cheese accordingly. And then uh, just to finish it off, we're gonna top it off with just a little sprinkling of Espelette pepper. Give some of that extra Basque deliciousness. Boom, done. All right, all right, so we've got our pizza put together. Let's go put it in the oven, in our oven, and uh, we'll set it on to bake. Meet you over by the fire. So we're here by the fire, we got our setup. So like I said, we got a nice 20 quart um dutch oven what we did is we put just a nine inch pie pan upside down there to act as kind of a riser give some space so this does not have direct contact with the bottom and we're going to kind of set that in the middle there so we have an air gap all the way around that's what we want and we're going to put the lid on and this dutch oven is no small thing all right so we're gonna we got a bed of coals underneath our dutch oven uh we're gonna put some coals up on top so at home i would maybe cook this on around like 425 for 35 minutes or so so we're gonna leave this in here for yeah let's try maybe 35 minutes and uh then we're gonna check it and if we need to cook it some more then we'll put all the heat back on and we'll keep cooking it some more uh it's gonna be 35 minutes for us it's gonna be just a moment for you all right so it is now 35 minutes later over on my end uh let's check out our pizza i can hear it sizzling there we can all smell it here Oh yeah, that looks done. Then we'll try it. Okay. Now let's get this sucker out. Don't got a lot of clearance here, so we're gonna have to kind of jimmy it out of there. All right, so let's cut into this, see what we've got here. see got a nice cook on our crust there thoroughly cooked through all right let's let's give this a try oh no you don't get to get away from there everybody Everything about that works. That's, that's delicious. Wow. Whew. That was good stuff. And let's head back over to the fire and we'll talk about what makes this video so special. Okay, so I told you that today is a very special episode and it is. Uh, so but before I even started this channel, I asked a little question of my friends on Facebook. What would you like to see me do on my channel? What kinds of things do you think I should make? And uh, one of my friends, who is a very special friend of mine, 
Um, he suggested that I do Basque food. I told him that I had other plans for Basque food and I still do have other plans. Um, and he also really loved, uh, he's always loved my pizza. Um, I've made it for him a number of times and he's always loved it. And you know, this friend, he has been um, one of the most supportive people throughout my whole culinary journey. He and I got to be friends through serving together at uh, church. That's kind of where we got to know each other. He's, he isn't a chef at all. Uh, he's just a really cool guy. And uh, so anyway, uh, William Shaw unfortunately uh, passed away about a month ago. And um, I wanted to make this video uh, for him. I wanted to honor his uh, request and uh, make something that I think that he'd like. Bill was always a very special friend of mine and uh, yeah I don't I don't really know what words can convey how much I truly love and appreciate Bill Shaw uh, the impact that he's made in my life. Um, you gonna miss you Bill? I already do, and uh, this one's for you, brother.